when someone becomes a seed sower, you change the life of God because he experiences his image through you. He experiences his love through you. He experiences his power through you. When someone becomes a sower, they take on the nature of God concerning not only his gospel, but concerning their brethren. They care about the kingdom. They care about souls being one. Therefore, God entrusts them with riches. God entrusts them with abundance. Because they care about God's kingdom, souls being one, which is God's major priority. Remember, God sowed a seed. It was Jesus. And the purpose of the seed was souls being one. When you operate as a sower, you become the harvest advocate of God. Imagine that. You become the harvest advocate of God. So now God is seeing you fight for his cause. The Bible says in Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy. Let them shout continually. I think that's Psalm 35 verse 27. It said he that favor my righteous cause. Think about this. He that favor my righteous cause. What is God's righteous cause? To win souls. To get his word to cover the earth. In Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah talked about how the whole earth will be covered with his glory. I think that's Isaiah chapter 6 as well. Isaiah 44. We see in Psalms, David talked about how the whole earth is full of his glory. We see Psalm 24 that said that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. And all those that dwell therein. We see in how God is owner of the earth. And he has a objective. He has a motive. And what's the motive? It is to cover the earth with his word. To cover the earth with his voice. To cover the earth with his gospel. To cover the earth with what he's saying. To cover the earth with his knowledge. Cover the earth. With his prophecies, cover the earth with his wisdom, his intelligence. Whenever you become a sower, you're telling God, I agree with you that your harvest would manifest. That what the reason you sowed the seed of Jesus. I want to invest in you getting the harvest of people here in the gospel when you are seed sower. You take an anointing from the father to live big on earth. You know why? Because he's going to pull on you. He's going to pull on you to sponsor his work. He's going to pull on you to sow seeds. Remember, I told you there have been times where I hear Dr. Mike Murdoch would say, I, um, I, I want somebody to sow this amount. I want 10 people to sow this amount. And I'll come and I'll sow the amount of 10 people. Because what I'm doing is I'm helping a man of God fulfill his ministry. I reap what I sow. When you are sower, you are a problem solver for God. Whenever he needs something done, he can call on you because you is his woman. You are his man. You are his bride. You are his son. You are his daughter. And he can call on you. Everybody should thrive to get to that point where your man of God could look to you to help him out in any situation. Why I say this? Because there's benefits. There's the prophet's reward. Then there's the righteous man's reward. The righteous man's reward and the prophet's reward is a double portion of blessing. And the righteous man's reward, the prophet's reward, God gives ideas. Through that prophet's body to speak things over you, to bring the manifestation of things that benefit you, increase you, 
cause you to have pleasure and prosperity. The prophet is a prosperity carrier, a prosperity transference. The prophet could release prosperity at his will. The prophet could release prosperity at his will. And the prophet could decree a thing and it'll be established. The prophet's word manifests. Like those of you all in Texas, watch this here. How, well, I ain't got to prophesy that too much. But we going to have rain in September. Watch. I'm not waiting for no weatherman. I'm telling you, watch. Watch how the wind start blowing. Ma grova sokuna nis. Dele kurisa anglo. Watch how the wind start blowing in Texas as a sign of the move of God that's going to happen in October the 1st and October the 2nd. Watch. Watch how the wind start blowing. Watch how the violent wind start blowing. And watch how some of you all, even some of you all in New York, some of you are, if you in Philadelphia, if you in St. Louis, if you in Magre de Govasco Runda, watch how the wind start blowing in your land and watch you in California. Watch how the wind start blowing in your land. Watch how you hear violent winds beating up against your place. Watch. When you a seed sower, everything changes just because of you. If you go to a workplace, that workplace will start prospering. That workplace will start having increase just because of you. When you a seed sower, God changes the climate at your presence. Just because your presence is there, things will change. Just because you in the room, things will change. Just because you in the city, things will change. Just because you're in the location, things will change. A seed sower carries God's manifest presence even when they don't feel it, even when they don't see it, even when they don't have chills on their body. They don't look like they're powerful. They carry God's presence wherever they go. A seed sower. When you're sowing seed, remember, you're saying, Lord, I agree that your will be done. We believe that the famine is over. We believe that the fruit is on the vine. We believe dry places are watered. And it's the latter rain. It's the latter rain. When you are seed sower, God adds on angels to your life to protect you, to prosper you, to increase you. When you are seed sower, God hears your prayer. That's why you should include praying in your sowing. Because God wants to hear you. When you are seed sower, even while you're sleeping, God will drop dreams in your heart. God will put desires in you because he wants you to decree a thing. He wants you to pray for it. He wants you to say, Lord, I ask you to give me this. When you are seed sower, God will put desires in your heart because he want to fulfill all of them. He'll put fantasies in your mind. He'll put imaginations in you because that's what he wants to give you. When you're a seed sower, God has your harvest on his mind. He want to take you to the next degree of life. It has nothing to do with greed. It has nothing to do with your own ambition. It is the ambition of God to see you live good, to see you live well. It is the ambition of God to see you in abundance. It is the ambition of God. You notice what Jesus said. I come to give you life and life more abundantly. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Jesus said, I have come. This is what I came to do. 
to give you life and life more abundantly. Saints, you got to understand when he said giving it shall be given unto you, it was Jesus talking to his disciples. He was training his disciples how to sow and how to reap a harvest, how to sow and how to reap a harvest, how to give and how to receive. He was showing them how to invest and receive investors, how to invest and receive investors, how to invest and receive investors, how to invest and receive investors. It wasn't the disciples. It was Jesus saying, let me give you the secret. If I could see you sowing into my word being preached, if I could see you sowing into my gospel, I will cause people on this same earth to do unto you what you're doing unto me. The seed is the power of God, is the power of the Holy Ghost that brings you up financially. It brings you up in your health. It brings you up in your mind. It brings you up in your emotions. It brings you up in your relationships. It's through seed sowing that God delivers you from destroyers. It's through seed sowing that God set you free from liars. It's through seed sowing that God brings you out of self-deception. It's through seed sowing that God set you free from your flesh. Through seed sowing, you invest in the power of God and the power of God invests back into you. You help the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus helps you. You bless the Lord God and the Lord God blesses you. You prosper the work of the Lord. Then the work of the Lord prospers you. It's through seed sowing that God sets your soul out of the gates of hell and plants you in your heavenly places seat. It's through seed sowing that God could quicken you and take you out of the mindset of the flesh. Take you out of the mindset of sin. Take you out of the mindset of evil. Take you out of the mindset of addictions and afflictions. And bring you into the position that you've been called to walk in. It's through seed sowing that you tell the Lord, set me free from my demons. It's through seed sowing that you get acquainted with your angels. It's through seed sowing that you get to know how the glory works. How the power of God moves. How faith works. How the gifts of the Holy Ghost works. It's through seed sowing. It was through seed sowing that the church went up because in Acts chapter 4, even though we see in Acts chapter 2, Holy Ghost falling, Acts chapter 3, healings going on, Acts chapter 4, we see seed sowing going on because God was saying, once y'all step into what I love, I'm about to explode the church with signs and wonders. Once you step into seed sowing, I'm going to show you how to live a life of unlimited power. When you step into seed sowing, I'm going to show you how to live a life of unlimited glory, signs and wonders, miracles, prosperity, abundance, favor, pleasure, grace, wisdom, honor, protection, deliverance. It was all through seed sowing. It was all through seed sowing. You notice the Lord taught them how to pray in tongues. The Lord taught them how to fast. The Lord taught them how to seek his face. But then the big finale was I need to teach you how to take what you possess and put that money into my apostle's hand. Put that money into my prophet's hand and push my gospel. Invest in my system and let me show you that I'm the harvest producing God. I'm the harvest keeping God. Promise keeping God, way making God, increasing God. How could you know what Abraham knew, what Isaac knew if you don't sow? You'll never know. This is God's way. This is how you release your faith. You release your trust. And this is how things happen. This is how the power of God is moved. Into your direction to fix things when you become a seed sower. And I don't mean one time. I don't mean two times. I mean that you respect God with your finances for the rest of your life. You, you commit yourself to this lifestyle. Because even when God makes you a multimillionaire, don't turn your back on God and start doing what you want with that money. Don't start going to the club, throwing up no money at no strip club, playing no lottery. Don't defile the money of God. Don't be up there playing in no casino. Don't be up there gambling. When God put money in your hand, don't be buying no drugs. When God make you a multimillionaire, you got to stay in the flow of sowing. God is able to do 
Just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. That key a little high. God is able to do <laughs> just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God because he won't. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, he's able. Oh, 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 he's able. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. We believe that the famine is over. We believe that the fruit is on the vine. We believe dry places are watered and it's the latter rain. Oh, it's the latter rain. We believe that the famine is over. We believe that the fruit is on the vine. We believe that the dry places are watered. It's the latter rain, oh. It's the latter rain. It's the latter rain. It's the latter.